And it absolutely blows my mind. It's kind of funny in a way. How many people want to become full-time music producers? How many people want to record for the rest of their lives and be a full-time recording artist, be a successful recording artist at that, yet they put themselves behind by years as far as career development just because they're refusing to... What's going on guys? Adam Ivey, sellmusic.com, here to help you go further, faster in your music career by sharing proven marketing techniques and strategies that are gonna help you transform that passion for making music into a legitimate business that's gonna provide you with freedom and fulfillment. Two of the most important things in life, in general. Now, this video is something that I wish I had when back when I got started producing music back in 2006. The importance of what we're gonna talk about here is, is high, so just bear with me all the way to the end and then leave a comment to let me know what you thought. Anyway, the importance of recording yourself is something that is glossed over, is something that people don't think about and don't talk about. Now, as a recording artist, it kind of makes sense, right? But as a producer, it makes just as much sense, and I'll tell you why. The reason that I'm bringing up this topic is the fact of the matter that I've been dealing with a lot of recording artists lately, as their, and their number one excuse was that they couldn't afford studio time. And this is the thing that just blows my mind day after day after day. Now, I understand the importance of going to a great recording studio, especially if you're not an audio engineer, if you don't have time under your belt, if you don't have that experience, you look at maybe recording in your home as something that's not feasible for you, right? It's too expensive. But we live in a day and age where an interface is relatively inexpensive. A microphone is incredibly affordable. In fact, I bought this interface off of Amazon for about $40, I think it was. This is the Behringer Euphoria UM2. Now, I bought this for the simple fact that I'm gonna be doing a video showing you how to record with a super uh, cheap interface. And this microphone is like notorious on YouTube. It's the newer studio microphone. What model is this? Uh, NW700. This right here was $20. I think it cost me $21.99. Amazon Prime, good to go. So for about 60 bucks, 60 or let's, let's say $75, you can record yourself at home. Now, this video isn't about having, you know, uh, radio quality mixes from home for $75. That's not what I'm getting at in this video. It's the importance of recording yourself to learn that skill set, to learn that craft and to learn the mixing process, right? It's to learn the dynamics of a mic, no, no pun intended. It's to be able to get in front of that mic and be able to understand how you need to do your breath work when you're a recording artist, how far you need to be away, the cadence in which you perform. It's so much more efficient. It's so much more economical to you when you are going to a big recording studio to have reference vocals, not just not just for the engineers and the, and the producers in the studio to hear, but to get you used to how to perform that piece, right? There's so many times that I, as a producer, and I'm gonna to switch to the producer side of things right now. I, as a producer, back in the day when I was producing in Reason way back in the day, I had way too many layers of shit in my mix, right? Uh, I look at every mix now like a sandwich because I'm kind of food obsessed, right? The high end, the treble, the high frequencies are the top piece of bread. The bottom piece of bread are the bass frequencies. You need to have enough space in the middle for the, for the condiments, you need to have enough space in the middle for the sust, uh, sustenance or the substance of that sandwich, which would be the vocals 99% of the time. Now, if you're an instrumental artist, if you just do you know EDM and stuff like that, obviously you're gonna have some vocal elements most of the time, unless we're talking techno and stuff, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. The importance of understanding how to record yourself where those pockets need to be for the vocals is incredibly important. And you don't have to have a great voice for this because you can open up a, a graphical EQ it doesn't matter if you're in GarageBand, if you're in Logic, FL, doesn't matter. Every single one of the DAWs, even uh, Audacity, is going to have a graphic equalizer where you're going to be able to see where those frequencies are. Now, if everything is discombobulated and it's, it's, it's overloaded, you're not going to have any room for vocals. The one way I, I improved my mixes significantly, and I hope a lot of you guys have done this as well, is back in the day when I realized that I had too much in my beats, I started stripping them down, and then I would find the acapellas for every radio song I could find, whether it be pulling it off of YouTube, pulling it off of record pools that I was involved with, like uh, DJ City, for example, and just throw those into the, the DAW and then mix around it. And then all of a sudden, when you pull away that, that acapella, you realize, Wow, this is a whole different composition, this whole different instrumental. So having a microphone set up, regardless of if it's what I just showed you or having a Shure SM7B or some of the other mics I have over here, the fact of the matter is when you're recording, you're gonna understand the process a whole lot better. You're gonna understand mixing way better. 
Now, as a recording artist, if you're not recording now, and if you're going to a studio and paying, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to record each record, obviously that's gonna add up. But if you record it at home, not only are you gonna have a better reference, like I said a few seconds ago here, but you're gonna be able to show that engineer, that producer, what you're going for. And they're gonna be able to give you feedback immediately. So when you jump in the booth, you can throw a different cadence on there. You could throw different backing tracks. You can mix it a little differently, maybe tweak some harmonies and get a really good idea of what you're doing. So when you go to the studio, you're spending less time because you're in there uh, spending, or I'm sorry, you're spending less money because you're in there for less time. Now, any major engineer, any major producer, uh, songwriter is going to be able to agree with this, right? Because, well, unless, unless they just want you to be in the studio and spending as much money because you aren't prepared and you're just spending hour after hour after hour in there, which is helping them make their car payment. But, you know, I digress. The fact of the matter is a lot of you guys are hitting me up saying that lack of money for studio time is what's holding you back from success. It's holding you back from progress. Adam, I don't have any, I don't have any new music. How can I record? Adam, I can't do YouTube videos. I don't have a camera. Adam, I, I should just have a whole website and a whole new series called Adam I, Adam Butt, because I hear a lot of excuses. Now, if you want to do something in life, you want to become the best at it. You want to become the skill set or have the skill set that's needed to make you the best at whatever you're doing. Now, I described this or I explained this in a different video is different is not better. Only is better, right? Different is cool. You know, you, you can differentiate yourself, but only is the best thing in the world. Only doing something is, is an absolute game changer. It's unfair advantage, whatever you want to call it. And so I want you to be able to experiment with a, even a cheap setup like this, guys. You could screenshot this. In fact, I'll put this under this video in the description box, these two things. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do the video on how to record a very, very good mix with these very, very inexpensive tools. Actually, I, I might do a video with my good friend Austin, who I just featured on the channel. Let me know if you want to see that collab, because Austin's an incredible engineer, awesome producer. We can make some magic with $75 worth of gear. I promise you that. Now, when it comes to being a producer, you also want to be able to record yourself to understand how to record others. Your voice doesn't have to be great to be a reference vocalist. Your voice doesn't have to be great to be a songwriter. In fact, a lot of the songs that I've uh, written and have have had other artists perform auto tune. Uh, well, I, I don't I don't have all the all the plugins pulled up, but the fact of the matter is, I know how to record my voice and use auto tune, use Melodyne, use pitch correction within Logic to make it listenable. Because at the end of the day, I'm not the artist. I'm sending it to an artist so they can perform it. At, so all they needed to understand is the is the cadence, is the melodic progression that you're going for, and then they can do the rest because they're the artist. So as a producer, don't think that you're not allowed to record. Don't think that there's no value in recording. I want you guys to be able to use these tools to even start a podcast, to have Skype interviews with people where you can talk a little bit more clearly because you're using a mic and an interface. Now, you don't have to go super cheap. If you have a budget, maybe you have a day job that pays really well, you can get a nicer mic. You can go and get a, you know, a Neumann. You can go and get a Shure. You can go and get, like, there's so many great quality brands out there and the prices have really come down over the years that you don't need a Universal Audio Apollo. You don't need a Shure SM7B or a, you know, fill in the blank, right? The SM7B is actually relatively inexpensive. The fact of the matter is, guys, I want you to be able to broaden your skill set and stop think, stop thinking that you need other people for all these different things when you're not actually working on the finished product. You're working on the process. So many people are impatient in getting from A to B that they just want to whip through it. They just want to whip through it. They'll go into a studio and pay money that they don't have to get help from someone they don't necessarily need help from right away. Now, I have a lot of engineer friends. I have a lot of producer friends that are absolute craftsmen in what they do. But a lot of them, like I mentioned earlier, would agree with me that you need to have your shit together before you go visit them. It's like going to a college and, and not knowing what the hell you want to do with your life and signing up and being $80,000 in debt, having a mortgage payment before you even own a house. The equivalent is what I'm getting at with that reference. Now, it's dangerous. You need to be able to put into practice what you have up here, be able to record it and understand, oh man, a lot of those T's and those S's are too harsh. I need to pull that back. I'm getting way too close up to the microphone. I thought that I sounded excited, but I didn't. 
those ad libs really don't work here. That harmony isn't going to work with the way that the, the instrumental chord progression is going. Does that make sense, guys? I hope it does. Let me know in the comments if you're recording yourself already. And if you are, I want to know in the comments how long you've been doing it and what your setup is. And over on Instagram, I'd love for you to tag me in your, uh, you know, home studio, or even if you have a professional studio, if you have just a little kitchen table setup. I want to see it. I love seeing photos like that. I love interacting with you guys over there. And I'll put that information in the description box where you can find me on it. I'll put it up on the screen. It's at Adam Ivy. Anywhere online, it's at Adam Ivy. Super easy. Also, I just opened up some more spots. I was in Europe for a week. I just opened up some more spots to do one-on-one -on -one calls. I'll have something up on the screen right now if you want to book that uh, and apply to get on a, a phone call with me. No big deal. No obligation. Whatever. What I'm getting at, guys, is I want you to start thinking outside of the box and going after what you want to do. I want you to be able to be the best in what you're doing and try to stay away from distractions. I want you to have all the tools in your arsenal to really become dangerous, and I don't want you to think that you need a million dollars to do it. Now, if you found any value in this, I hope that you subscribed. If you haven't yet, I'm going to put a little link over here to where you can join the channel family, click that little bell icon. I'm going to put a video up right here that I think you should go to next. As always, all my contact information will be in the description box below, and I'll see you guys next time.